This is what we call a gospel tract. The word gospel means good news. It's the good news that God has revealed for us in the Bible concerning his salvation through his son Jesus Christ. A tract is a leaflet about an aspect of that salvation and this is one of those. It's not the kind of tract um, that you can read in five seconds and then discard and maybe forget about it. You can maybe forget about this one, but um, this one is, um, it, it hasn't just got the bones, it's got some meat in it. And I don't apologize for that because um, I think this is very, very important. And this one, it begins with, uh, we and our children are conceived and born in sin. The title, you see, uh, it tells you exactly what it is. So when I hand it to a person, they can see what it is. It's, they're not being deceived into thinking it's something other than what it is. Some people, they receive, you may have seen one, um, million dollar tracks, you know, and um, the person receives it thinking they're getting something, you know, for nothing, and then they realize exactly what it is, so they rip it up and disgust and throw it away. I just feel there's a little bit of deceit, you know, in that. Just me, but, you know, just how I am. Uh, I like just to be up front, you know. It's a gospel tract. It's about sin, it's about salvation, and it's about our reconciliation that's needed to God. So this one, we with our children are conceived and born in sin. A frightful confession, is it not? But a confession that God wants to hear from us. One, of course, that would have been familiar to past generations. Kind of thing that would have been almost common knowledge, well in this country at least anyway. Um, back in the day, but now, because of the mind-altering drug of evolution that people have been bombarded with, the nauseating drivel besotting them with ignorance as to the rock from which they've been hewn, um, they're just not told what the root of the problem is in humanity. And of course, they are ever trying to address and to cure the effects instead of looking for the cause. But this is the cause. We and our children are conceived and born in sin. That's the root, you see. The political chaos, the moral chaos, all the chaos that you see in the world, all the social issues, they're not really social issues, they're sin issues. Because underlying them all, you see, the brokenness of our world and our societies lies right down deep in the root is um, the sin problem. We and our children are conceived and born in sin. And our deceitful hearts, of course, they will recoil from this. Oh, they, they won't like it. What, me, my children, my little bitty babies? You're telling me that they're hardwired for sin, that it's in their DNA? Well, I'm not, but God is. It's exactly what he's saying. And this is what the track you see addresses. The connection you see of original sin between parents and children is just not grasped, appreciated, you know. You know that we come into the world, we and our children, we come into the world as monsters in God's eyes. Yeah. With the sentence of death already lying upon us. Born to die, suffer grief, born in, born in and with sin, and lying at the end of the rocky road of life stands a coffin, a grave, or a crematorium. And beyond it, a mocking abyss. 
shouldn't this make us tremble? It really ought to do. To implore the great judge to have mercy upon us? King David, he says, and he nails it. Psalm 51 and verse 5, check it out. If you haven't got a Bible, uh, write to me, I'll send you one. Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. At, right at the point of conception is where life begins, and where your sin career begins too. Then nine months later you're born. Live in sin, die in sin, unless God by his sovereign free grace intervenes and saves you, makes you a new creature. Sin is the inherent condition. And sins, sin, singular, is the condition. And sins, plural, yeah, they're the unrighteous deeds that spring from the condition. The word sin indicates our general sphere of unrighteousness in which we lie, in the throes of death. But of course the good news is, as Paul says, the Apostle Paul that is, in uh, Romans chapter 4 and verse 25, who, Jesus that is, was delivered for our offences and was raised again for our justification. That's good news, is it not? Being dead in your sins, Paul the Apostle again, he says in the book of Colossians, in uh, chapter 2 and verse 13, And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. He's writing, of course, speaking about Christians who were dead in their sins and made alive, quickened by God through the gospel. So you see, when you stand appalled at the state of the world and your society, when you see people having done some atrocious, awful deed, and you say, why on earth did they do that? How could they do that? Or you stand appalled maybe sometime at yourself, why did I do that? Just remember where it came from. This is the root. Born and conceived in sin. See? And the only antidote lies in the saving grace of God and his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the consequence of your sin and your sins, both, and therefore, we are all of us children of wrath, under the wrath, the holy displeasure of God. This is the necessary consequence. And this, of course, cuts just as deeply as does Paul the former. And it takes a humility that very, very few possess in this day. We and our children, you know, hands up for God in humility. Yes, you're right. I'm wrong. We and our children are conceived and born in sin. That takes humility. Yeah. But that's the native vernacular of Holy Scripture. Uh, Ephesians, this time, check these verses out, please, if you will. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, by nature, get it? By nature the children of wrath, even as others. By nature. Conceived, born in sin, and therefore children of wrath. That is opposed to children of grace and heirs of God. What a sharp, sharp contrast there is between the natural man and the spiritual man. The one who has been born again. A child of wrath is someone who is made out of wrath. Yeah. Uh, Romans chapter 9, this time. Um, 
chapter 9 and verse 22. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? We were by nature children of wrath, made, made out of out of wrath, you know the the track says, and dies under the wrath of God day by day, all our existence, unless until the grace of God kicks in. Romans again, chapter 1, verse 18. This is the Bible, friends. This is not me. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, who hold under, hold down, hold back the truth of the knowledge of God in unrighteousness. And one day, this person will receive the full of the inheritance the full revelation and outpouring of the wrath of God God's wrath is the terrible debt that awaits man born conceived and born in sin the rather low interest that pays here on earth in disapp disappointments distresses, cares and weariness of life is only just a bitter down payment foretaste of the wrath to come. The depth of the abyss of misery that yawns before fallen man. Children of wrath are born outside of God's kingdom and therefore into the devil's kingdom. They come into this world entering through the gate of hell and birth. This naked, miserable fact that the grace of God begins to appear as a flame of light. Yeah. Surely, surely, in the darkness you can see the flame of light. As I speak, as I speak about this matter, the grace of God that has appeared, not received by all men, but it has appeared unto all men. Both we and our children, let this harden you and you will extinguish the blessed light of the flame of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Please do not let this do that to you. God from eternity has chosen some, not everyone, given some to his beloved son and has secured their justification in his resurrection for we and our children. The original pollution which man is conceived and born in is the root of all and the vilest and most abhorrent sins and crimes. The bad fruit that you see in humanity today. Children of wrath, even as others. Ephesians 2 verse 3 once again. So without the conviction that this is the reality concerning us and our children, this is our condition, until the miracle of grace is imparted, we remain outside paradise. And there is a no entry sign on the door. Insomuch, the tract goes on to say that we cannot enter into the kingdom of God outside of heaven. It gets worse, you say. Paradise is a lost possession. 
except that is you're born again the right the ability the desire to enter everything must be provided we haven't got it naturally god must give it to us verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god john chapter 3 verse 3 that is perceive understand grasp the kingdom of god a new birth it's a miracle it's a miracle my sheep hear my voice jesus says that's a miracle to hear the voice of the shepherd to be born again natural birth the origin of life is still an unsolvable mystery even for science with its x-rays and scans will never never explain the mystery of a rational creature being composed of material cells yeah. so how much more the new birth that brings the life of god into the soul and the love of god into the heart it is a phenomenal phenomenal miracle and it's god's doing therefore if any man be in christ united to christ in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new except we are born again we need much more than just right knowledge we need to be reborn We have developed and improved standards of education. We have sought to develop good people, totally ignoring what God has revealed. And all the education and all the technology and all the science. We are a scientific age. You say we're enlightened. We don't need the gospel anymore. We have technology, but still, still. Still, we go about killing and slaughtering one another and delight in it too it has not changed anything only the gospel only the good news of the gospel god's good news can do that god says in ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 11 that he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked but rather that they should turn turn and live he says the answer to the sinner's every objection you know is answered by God and his word all that is that we need to know I mean reasonable sensible inquiries the word of God which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The truth of God, man's great and desperate need. Only the one who is born in Zion, born that is, through the church of God and the proclamation of its message, the good news of the gospel, except you be born again, there is no other way for the child of wrath who is conceived and born in sin to become a child of God. He came to his own, but his own received him not, Jesus that is. But to as many as received him, to them, to them, those who believed on his name, to them he gave the power to become children of God who were born not of the flesh, not of blood, not of the will of man, but of God. Born of God. Isaiah, the prophet, he says in chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Again, I urge you, check out these verses for yourself, the word of God. For it's given to us for. 6 and 7 seek ye the Lord while he may be found 
Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Abundantly pardon. Seek him while he may be found. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2 verse 39 For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We and our children conceived and born in sin therefore children of wrath but the promise is unto you and to your children. For all that is who will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from this dreadful condition and of course from that which emits from the condition and its full-blown and final consequence the wrath to come. Call upon the name of the Lord. Believe. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved.